Well, good evening, Miss Ann. Good, good to see you tonight, and good evening to the ladies of Lulatin Baptist Church and our viewers for answers with Miss Ann. We've trusted everybody has had a good week. Have you had an exciting week, yes, Miss Ann? Yes, very exciting. Good, 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 good. Well, i got a question to share with you. Uh, in just a moment, I would like to encourage our ladies. We appreciate hearing from you. Feel free to uh, share your comments, send in questions, let Miss Ann know how the video is being a blessing to you. We definitely would like to uh, hear from you. Then, uh, if you can, share this video on YouTube. Share it on Facebook. Let others hear the word and hear how they can find hope and rest. Then we hope that you'll make plans to join us as, Lord willing, Lulatin Baptist will resume its monthly women's Bible study uh, on Thursday, October the 20th at 11 o'clock. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> August the 20th, I'm thinking ahead. And August the 20th uh, at 11 o'clock we'll meet in the sanctuary, good Lord willing. And uh, for directions to the church, you can find the the information on the drop-down box in the descriptions for the video. And Miss Ann, I believe the Lord wants you to be teaching from the book of Romans. Yes, yes. Very good. We're excited to uh, have that happen once again. All right, but for now, we have a question from our studio <laughs> audience, Miss Ann. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe this is one of the most asked questions. Is that correct? Most asked questions. All right. Mm -hmm. The question is, how does a woman find hope and rest? Interesting. All right, what can you share with us, Miss Ann? Well, first of all, Pastor, I could say that I've asked that question myself, okay. even as a saved woman. Okay. And uh, because uh, I have known hopelessness and I have known restlessness. So these are truths God's teaching me. I'm okay. still learning. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I even, uh, in my mind, I talked to the Lord, and I said, Lord, there was a time that I said to the Lord, Lord, I think I'm just not going to teach your word anymore, because I'm teaching truths that I'm not experiencing. Right. And um, I am so glad the Lord let me, when I had that attitude toward him, and I'm, I'm glad the Lord let me read in Psalm 94, 17. Listen to what the Lord um, answered me with. He said, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. So mm. he let me know um, that's not the, to give up, that's not Amen. the answer. Uh, we all go through times of hopelessness. Uh, I've noticed when I um, doubt, that causes worry and that produces hopelessness. I'm going to say that again. When I doubt God, when I that causes worry and hopelessness. So I have to watch out for doubt. Okay. And then, uh, how can you be re a restful when you're so full of anxiety? Well, also in this Psalm, I love 94, Psalm 94, because God has given me some truths that He has let me know, and I am able to work out the truths that you're teaching. Hmm. I am. Uh, powerful enough to make every truth that you teach my word be a reality in your life. Mm -hmm. And so um, one time when I was going through such hopelessness and restlessness, and we have to watch out for it, even though we love the Lord with all our heart. Psalms 94 verses 12 and 13. This, this is the answer the Lord gave me. Blessed is the one whom I chasten, or I discipline, or I train. That word um, is intermingled. He said, blessed are those that I train, and I teach them out of my book, or out of my law. So the mm. Lord is saying, you want to learn these truths to be um, true in your life, then you have to go through training. And you know what that means, don't you? Mm. <laughs> that means testings <laughs> mm. to see uh, if you're going to really take me at my word, if you're going to really believe who I am and what I say I will do, you will let me do that in you. So that's training. Uh, 
Okay, he said, flesh is the one that I train or discipline or chasten and teach out of my law. And th listen to this, that thou mayest give her rest in the days of trouble, mm. that she will learn it is my power to keep her calm in the day of adversity. Isn't that a wonderful truth? Yes, it is. Okay. Art, you can have that in your head, but now to get it down into your heart, to work it out. But remember, he says, I'm going to have to test you, and you're going to have to learn from my book. You're going to have to let me teach you from my book. I, I would like to, um, to give you an illustration. First of all, um, I was reminded, you know, when we think of the Lord Jesus uh, uh, going to the cross, we see in our mind, uh, we've seen pictures drawn are painted uh, that he's carrying his cross and he's fallen. Right. Okay. So I got to study in that in the Gospels. I thought, I wonder if that is really true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had seen a picture of it. Mm -hmm. So I looked in the book of John. I looked it up in all four Gospels. And in the book of John, Jesus was commanded by the soldiers to carry his cross. That was just a traditional thing, okay. that the criminal or the one that was going to be crucified was, would carry his own cross. But if you read the other three Gospels, it sounds like that then they commanded a certain man to carry the cross that mm -hmm. was passing by. Mm -hmm. And it's believed by Bible teachers that uh, Jesus was so, um, he had been in the garden through agony. Mm -hmm. He had right. been up all night. He had been on trial. And then he had been so brutally beaten in Isaiah that it said he was not even recognized as a man. And so he fell because he was overcome. He was God, but he was man. He was mm -hmm. perfect man, but in man <coughs> he had feelings as we do. He understands our feelings. That's what it says in Hebrews. He feels our feelings. So I, uh, I saw in my mind and in my heart that Jesus fell because he was so overcome and his cross was, God sent another man to carry his cross for him. That right. is love, isn't it? Yes. And uh, then God allowed me to be tested in ways that uh, he gave that principle to me in a real way. I, uh, I've laughed about it later, but it wasn't funny when it happened. Uh, when I was going through radiation for cancer, um, I went seven weeks every day or five days a week. Well, in the first week, they were having much difficulty getting the treatment completed. It wasn't really anything I was doing. It was something that they just could not get completed. So uh, during one of the sessions, it had taken so long and they were not, not getting anywhere. And so the technician came in to check on me. Okay. And I said, I'm leaving. She said, you can't do that. I said, I'm leaving. Hmm. <laughs> so I got my stuff. They let me down up off the table. They had me elevated in the air. So they let me down out of the air and uh, I left. Well, I went to my apartment and I felt so ashamed. I thought, Lord, there, uh, this is what I'm to go through and I'm, you know, I'm not doing it. So I called my sister, bawling like a baby, and I told her what I had done. She said, she didn't rebuke me, she didn't fuss at me. She just said, it's okay. In the morning, you get up and you go back and you take that tree back. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was uh, God sending somebody Amen. to be an encouragement to me. So, um, so you know what happened? Two weeks later, even a more difficult thing happened. And uh, the nurse came in and she said, I'm sorry, we're just having so much trouble. She said, it might be an hour or two before we can complete this treatment with me lying on the table. And... Uh, 
I am so glad that the Lord had advanced me enough that I could say, well, just ask the doctor, what does he want me to do? <laughs> it was just a little bit of growth, but yeah. praise God, I could see that Amen. God was coming and changing me. Mm. I didn't have to be hopeless or full of anxiety like that because he was, he was teaching me and he would have... And actually, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, He's with us all the time, whether somebody comes or not. So, uh, how do we learn hope and rest? We're going to have to go through testings, <laughs> and we're going to have to learn from the Word of God. One, um, Proverbs thirteen twelve. I like this. Proverbs thirteen twelve. The Lord said, uh, "When your hope is deferred, it really makes you sick." Mm -hmm. Actually, one doctor has said, my best medicine that I give a patient is hope. Isn't that amazing? Yes. A cardiologist said that. The best medicine that I give to my patient is hope. And so hope is very important. There will be no rest without hope. Mm. And uh, Proverbs says that if you don't have hope, you're going to be sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. That's right. So if you're hopeless, you're going to be sick. If you have hope, you're going to have life. Mm. Hope and rest go together. You'll not have rest without hope. Uh, do you see a principle that I'm trying to get sure. across? Okay. And so in Psalm 42, oh, I pray that each lady will read Psalm 42 because David wrote this psalm. And David was hopeless. <laughs> in this psalm, he was hopeless. But you know what? It was so needed to... Um, for other people, that the sons of the priest took this song, took this as a song as they uh, went toward the Lord or as they went on in the Lord. So this is an important psalm, Psalm 42. Okay. And in the psalm, David talks to his soul. David talks to himself. Have you ever answered? I mean, have you ever talked to yourself? Sure. I talk to myself out loud sometimes. My grandmother said, it's hard to talk to yourself if you just don't answer. Well, really, that's not scriptural <laughs> because, because it does say, give an answer. When you ask a question, give an answer. So, uh, excuse me, grandmother, but that wasn't scriptural. <laughs> so, so uh, he said, why are you cast down, oh, my soul? Or why are you so hopeless and emotional and restless because of anxiety. That was what he was asking himself. And then you know what his answer was? Hope in God. Hope in God. And your dad would say, now that's just not wishing. When you read the word hope, that means confident expectation. Mm -hmm. God is who he says he is, and God is going to do what he said he'll do. I read a statement, um, it's not in the Bible, but the principle is, um, we worry about things that don't even happen. Right. We get hopeless about things that don't even happen, don't we? Yes. We imagine. And so the psalmist said, or David said, hope in God, have confidence in me. We look at our circumstances, and we have no hope sometimes, no courage Hope in God. He said, I will remember what God has done for me in the past. Mm. So these things that I have felt were so difficult the last five years, I think about them and I think, God, you got me through them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't perfect. I was learning, but you were patient with me. And when I would get knocked down, you would be there or you would send somebody to pick me up mm. to encourage me. Amen. So... Um, Hope in God that God is going to work out good for things that seem so bad if we love him and want to be an honor for him. When we fall, we get up with his help and we go on seeking him and obeying him. I like butterflies, and I think the reason I like butterflies, the reason is because, well, one thing, they're beautiful. Yes, and uh, then when I think about where they came from, a caterpillar. Mm. Now, I don't want to be around a caterpillar. Amen. But I love butterflies. And remember the other day when you took me to see the tree planted in memory of your dad? Yes, I do. That a beautiful, colorful butterfly flew by. Right by you. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. <laughs> so uh, 
isn't God good in doing things like that? Yes, he is. Yeah. So if you're hopeless, know that's not of God. He's teaching you. If you're saved, he's teaching you, training you, teaching you from the word of God. And he said, just have confidence in what I say. Have confidence in that I'm going to do what I say. Well, that covers hope. Now let's uh, look at rest. Waves of emotion. I said, that's how I live, with waves of emotion. <laughs> and I about def decided that you just ride the wave with confidence in the Lord. It'll come and go. So just ride that wave with confidence in the Lord. Set my hope in Him. Rest. I guess my favorite verse about rest is Matthew eleven twenty eight. A lot of people know that by heart, don't they? Yes. Rest. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, the Lord Jesus said, if you're tired or worn out, labored for all kind of reasons, just come to me and I will give you rest. So we have to come to him, first of all, to be saved from our sins. He's the only one that can wash our sins away. You know, it says about us before we come to him, it says in the New Testament, that we're in the world without God and without hope. Mm. Without God, if you do not have God, there is no way you can have hope. But when we come to Jesus and he saves us from our sin, that's why he died, was buried, and rose again, that we would come to him by faith and say, yes, I want you as my Lord and Savior. Then he says, I will give you rest. Well, then why don't I experience rest every day? I do from from uh, the penalty of sin. I know I'm going to heaven. I have that rest. Amen. But why can't I experience rest uh, just in daily living when things come up? Well, I think God tells us in the next verses, he says, Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. That means I must surrender to the Lord Jesus. Be yoked up with him. That His yoke is, is submission. He was submitted to his father, wasn't he? Right. His purpose on earth was to, to do his father's will. So if I'm going to have rest... My purpose on earth is to be surrendered to the Lord Jesus for him to do his will in me, whatever it is. Mm. His yoke is submission. He said, take my yoke. So, so I can be led the way he goes. I won't be trying to go my own way. Right. I'll be led uh, by the way he wants to go. And then he says, learn from me. Learn from me. That's where we fail a lot of times. We don't seem, seek to learn from Jesus. I have to spend time with him, don't I? Yes. I have to let him teach me about himself and his ways. I will not grow if I do not spend time with the Lord. And I won't grow <laughs> mm. if I don't grow. Mm -hmm. So to be in the presence of the Lord, that spending time with him, I will learn from him. He said, I am meek and lowly. And we women, we ride or we pass those two words completely. But he said, you won't learn from me unless you're meek and lowly. Unless you're meek and lowly. And women that have listened to me um, for any, any length of time, they know that I liked, and I know some of them that have heard me teach before, they, they say, I know what Miss Anna is about to talk about now. She's talking about being meek and lowly or humble, peaceable, that all goes together. She's about to say that she loves her earrings, but every day when she puts her earrings on, she remembers that the ornament that God loves is a woman with a meek and peaceable spirit. So when I put my earrings on, one of them is meekness and one of them is peaceable. That means I want to do God's will. I've humbled myself to do His will Amen. and not. I don't ask God to humble me. I, I want to be willing to humble myself. Mm. But I must be teachable. That's what meekness means. I can be told what to do by God. So um, the earrings are meekness and peaceable. In Zechariah, the 12th chapter, the Lord said, to his people, before you came to know me, you were a prisoner of sin. And that's what we are. We are a prisoner of sin until we get saved. But he said, through the blood of Jesus, listen to what you become. He said, 
you can become a prisoner of hope. Wonderful. I had rather be a prisoner of hope than a prisoner of sin. Now right. that's that's a promise God says that we can be a prisoner. We can go around just being a prisoner of hope, hoping in the Lord, and that means expecting, confident expecting the Lord to give us rest every day. And he told people in the Old Testament, he said, um, if you'll be a prisoner of hope, I will give you double what you've lost because of sin. That's that's a wonderful truth, isn't it? Yes, it is. It might, it might not necessarily, it could be, it might not be necessarily material things, but the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. How about rest and hope and peace and all that? He said, I will give you a double portion mm. if you will be a prisoner of hope. It also says in the book of Romans that hope will make you not ashamed. I won't have to be ashamed that I said I'm leaving this place. <laughs> mm. Oh, goodness. They didn't forget me. <laughs> but I want them to remember me in a good way, not a bad way. Yes. I want, it to, I want them to remember me that I have hope in the Lord and I have rest that He gives. Mm. And He... He's teaching. He's teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, it says in 1 Peter 3.15, Be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. Let your hope be seen so much that somebody will say, How can you be such a hopeful person in a time like this? That's good. And then in 1 John, the third chapter, the Lord said, If you live with hope that one day soon you're going to meet me face to face, and you're going to be just like me. You'll never be anxious again. You'll mm. never worry again. You'll be just like me. He said, this hope gives us a real reason to live. And so I hope this has helped this woman and others that are struggling with this. Jesus is the answer. He can turn us from a caterpillar into a butterfly, new life. Amen. Wonderful teachings, Miss Ann. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, it's true when we're when we're preaching, we preach to ourselves, don't we? <laughs> yes. if, if we're if we're in the right attitude, we're preaching to ourselves. That's for sure. Well, thank you so much, and ladies, thank you again for viewing. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or comments. Please be sure and sure and share them in the comment box on the post, and we'd be happy to hear from you. And Miss Ann, thank you again for sharing the word. And is there anything else you'd like to say before we pray? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Pastor, when I teach the book of Romans, I uh, try to share the truth of we have to first learn how to live with God, then live with ourselves, and live with others. It's, it's a very helpful study I, I have found in how to handle, handle each day. That sounds like a wonderful outline. How to live with God how to live with yourself, and how to live with others. Yes. Amen. I'm excited. We'll be praying for you and the ladies when you start that study in a couple of weeks. Good Lord willing. All right, ladies. God bless you. We love you. We thank God for you. Miss Anne, if you would, close us in a word of prayer. God, thank you that you don't give up on us, but you are our constant helper. You love us, Lord, and you perfect that which pertains to us. Amen. You complete the work that you have begun. Encourage the hearts of dear women today that are listening that have felt hopeless and so restless. Lord Jesus, help us to know you are the answer, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.